the different processes running on your system can have different priorities. The processes have higher having higher priorities are going to have uh, more access to your CPU time. Uh, so, so there's a way for you to actually set and also adjust the the, the priorities of processes. The command is called a nice NICE. It's gonna the nice command can set the the so-called niceness of a process when you launch the process, and then a command called renice that's gonna allow you to make adjustment to 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 change the niceness of a certain process after it has been launched. The the so-called niceness is like the opposite of the priority. So processes with higher niceness are gonna have lower priority, and uh, the the niceness number can be set using the nice command using the dash n option to the nice command. And this priceness number ranges from the, is an integer that ranges from minus 20 to positive 19. So the highest the nice niceness number is 19, which actually corresponding to the lowest priority for a process that you're going to launch using nice. And the highest the lowest niceness number is minus 20. And it corresponding to it corresponds to the high, highest priority for the process that you're going to uh, launch. And for this particular example, let's try to use the command yes. If if you haven't used yes before, it's uh, it's just a command that prints out a Y uh, all the time. And uh, uh, so we're going to use this yes command because it's going to print out some stuff on the screen all the time. So I'm going to redirect the screen output to a, to a to a particular file called dev now. So this larger than symbol is called a redirection. We have used this symbol before using when using echo using the echo command. The the purpose for this redirection is to redirect the output from the screen to to this particular file and this particular file is called dev now. This dev now is like a sync Everything that goes into it will just disappear because uh, we don't really care about the screen dump of the yes command. So, so we're gonna just uh, use this uh, this file as the output, and let's just uh, run it. And then let's put it into the background by using Control Z, and then followed by background BG. So now this particular command is actually running in the background. If we want to look at uh, the all the processes we can use the top command. Now, the yes command is actually using like a 99.7 percent of the CPU time, and it has a niceness of, of minus 20. And it's also telling you the process ID is 22408, 22408. So when we when we are discussing the when we are discussing the command top, there's an option. In the in the top command, that's R. It's gonna allow you to make adjustment or renice a certain process ID. And uh, here you're gonna here if I if I press R, it's gonna it's gonna bring up this dialog. It's gonna ask me for process ID to renice. The default is two two four zero eight two two four zero eight. That's 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 yes, and it's launched by root. So if I type Enter here. I'm gonna accept this default process ID, and then it's gonna ask me to renice it to a different value. Suppose I want to give it a zero. For now, it's not gonna work because the uh, the top command was issued by a different user from root, so it's not gonna have the permission to change to change the niceness of a process. So it's gonna tell me that failed. But if I launch top using sudo, using the administrator privilege, and then do renice. 22408 it's going to allow me to make adjustment to suppose i want to suppose i want to change the niceness renice it to zero now you can sort of see the niceness has changed to zero so that's by using the using the using the top command to to renice a certain process now we can also use the command line let's quit the top by typing q but before we do that, let's keep a record of the process ID 22408. And then now let's quit the top. 
and then use the renice command again using sudo renice and then we are gonna renice re renice the yes command to positive 19 I suppose it's the highest the niceness number lowest priority and then we're gonna give it the process ID so how do we actually specify the process ID we use the dash P option we use the dash P option to specify the process ID which is a 22408 2408 and then it's gonna tell me the old priority was 0 and now the new priority is 19 now if you do a top command you can sort of see yes now the niceness is, has been changed to 19 again okay, quit so so nice and re nice allows you to make adjustment to the priority of a certain process the re the re nice command also accepts other options. Here you are here you are actually specifying the process ID by using a dash p option, and you can also specify, for example, the user ID. The user ID. In this case, you are going to reset the niceness of processes issued by uh, issued by a certain user account. For example, pochain in this particular example to to 19. Or you can use the dash G option, right? And then the dash G option allows you to set the niceness of all processes launched by a certain group. So, so say the protein group to to a specific numbers. In this case, particular 19. And uh, you can also look into how to use renice by 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 opening its main page ordering the priority of running process it has uh, some other options dash p we covered it already dash g dash u and uh, some other sort of options so now let's talk about the redirections how do you actually redirecting you can put in out of it before we actually talk about how to do redirecting redirections we need to understand what what those things are What's actually the standard input? What's the standard output? And the, what's actually the standard error? So, so standard input, the abbreviation for standard input is STDIN, and there's a number for it. It's just a zero. So, standard input is uh, represented by the number zero. In most of the systems, like the desktop computer that I'm using, the standard input actually is the keyboard. So, so everything that you type on the keyboard. Is rep is uh, is actually is actually uh, the standard in, and the standard output or STD out also has a number to represent it. It's a one, and usually on a desktop computer, it's just uh, the monitor, the screen, the stuff that's being printed on the screen actually goes to the STD out, and then there is a there's a, another thing that's called a standard error or STD error. It's actually the the output for writing error messages so most of the command line command line uh, command line commands the command line programs that we have talked about so far the output of those commands are automatically sort of directed to the std out and uh, on a desktop computer this std out usually goes to the screen so so basically the the output of a particular command is being displayed on the screen but you can think of a think of a screen, std out, as a ordinary file because on Linux operating system or Unix operating system everything is actually a file, including the disk, including the uh, the terminal. Everything is actually a file. You can think of std out as a special kind of file, and if you write to this particular file, the content of it are going to be displayed on the screen. So. And the STDER, the standard error, you can also think of it as a, a particular kind of file, and you can write you can write error messages to it. And this particular file is sort of specially designed for error messages. And uh, you can think of STDIN just as the input, the, the keyboard. So basically, that's uh, that's uh, several, that's three three standard the, the standard input and the standard output and the standard error. This kind of concept are quite useful for understanding the redirections. So, 
now let's look at some examples of uh, uh, redirecting inputs and outputs. Uh, so suppose suppose we want to look at the content of a particular file on the process. We can do cat process. We want to look at the CPU inf info. We want to look at the content of this particular file. And uh, the content is quite long, so it scrolls off the screen quite quickly. I wasn't able to sort of read it very carefully. You can you can so so this cat command that's a command line tool cat. We talked about a cat before how to display the content of a text file. The 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 default be behavior for cat is to send its output to send its output to the standard out standard output that's the std out. And the std out is connected to the screen, so it displays the content of this particular file on the screen. So now let's try to sort of redirect it, redirect it to a, to a different file. And you can use the larger than sign to redirect the output. So, so uh, let's redirect it to temp abc1, for example. So, so, so cat, and then the file, which is used as the input to cat, and then you can just uh, redirect it to a different file. So instead of directing it to std out, you are redirecting it to a different file. And this particular file is just a temp abc1. It's just an empty file. There's a, there's nothing in it. And this file doesn't really exist actually. So by doing this redirect, you are actually creating this particular file, this particular text file, at the same time writing uh, as as you are writing to this uh, writing contents to this particular file. So if you do that. And then you're going to have a file that's called abc1. And then you can display the content by using, for example, less abc1. And then, oh, sorry, less temp abc1. And then you're going to be able to sort of uh, page through it and read its content. So, so that's redirecting the output, redirecting the output of the cat command to a text file instead of the standard output. So larger than sign, this larger than sign actually means uh, uh, redirecting the output. Now suppose we want to redirect uh, the output of cat f for another input file, meminfo. So suppose I still redirect it into temp abc1, for example. Then it's going to overwrite. It's going to overwrite temp abc1. If you don't believe me, you can do less temp abc1 now. And you can sort of see the content is completely different now. So so if you, if you actually if you actually uh, use the larger than or, or this uh, output redirections uh, symbol on d on different uh, input but with the same output it's going to do the overwrite. Suppose you would like to sort of um, concatenate information. If you would like to concatenate information into um, into the same file, so if you if I would like to, so temp abc1 now holds the information of meminfo. Now suppose I want to add uh, or append append the CPU info also into temp abc1. What I can do is to use the larger than larger than sign. This larger than larger than symbol, just the two larger than sign, putting put the put them together without any space between them, is called append. So you are redirecting this thing instead of overwriting the existing existing content in temp abc1. You are appending this new information into uh, into this uh, this old file. Now if you do less temp abc1, so at beginning you are going to see the memory information. Because that was put into ABC1 earlier, and then you're going to see CPU information starting here. That's going to be CPU information that was concatenated into the file later on, appended to the file uh, to the same file later on. Now, so this is how you concatenate uh, put two files together into into a, into a single file
to the, put the two uh, outputs together into a single file. There's another way of doing that. There's another way of doing exactly the same thing. You can put two inputs, meminfo and then PROC, CPU info. You can give cat two input files. In fact, you can give cat any number of input files. You can put as many input files as you want as the as, as the input to cat. And then just use the larger than symbol temp. Let's let's call ABC2. ABC2 doesn't exist yet, but we are creating it and then put the content of these two files, mem info and CPU info, together into ABC2. Together into temp ABC2. And if you do a less temp ABC2, you're going to see memory information first and then CPU information later. In fact, you can actually compare temp ABC1 and temp ABC2. They are different and they have some differences because these two files, mem info and CPU info, are actually uh, real time information. So this, uh, this, the information in these two files keeps updating with the system. So every time the system changes, it's gonna, the content of these two files are going to change. So you can sort of see, for when I generated ABC1, the free memory was like uh, this many kilobytes. But uh, after when I generate ABC2, the memory is like uh, this this kilobytes. So you can sort of see the difference of the status of the computer, the, s the entire system, uh, based on the based on this kind of information, uh, based on this uh, using using diff. So that's redirecting the output. That's redirecting the output. You can also redirect the input, for example. So by default. By default, cat is gonna cat is gonna accept uh, a set of files as input. For example, CPU info. For example, this kind of as input. But another way for sending cat the input information is to use the redirect of the input uh, symbol. That's the smaller than sign. So suppose. Uh, Suppose by default it's a cat can read can read whatever file that's used as the input. But if you wanna if you wanna use the redirection symbol, it will also work. You can redirect the input using using a particular file, say temp abc1 for example. And then it's gonna the cat is gonna display the information that's inside of temp abc1. So basically you are using temp abc1 as the input. To cat instead of the standard input, so it's uh, you are just uh, uh, telling cat to to redirect to use a redirected uh, in, in input, and uh, you you'll be able to see that uh, that's actually the content of ABC1. So this 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 using cat and the redirect symbol may may not make much sense, but let's look at a, a different command. Let's look at a different command. Um, it's a package management or package information command called a DPKG. It's a particular command uh, that's um, that's on the Ubuntu uh, operating system. So if you do sudo DPKG get selections get selections. So this particular command is gonna uh, is gonna construct a list of all the packages or all the software packages that has been installed on my desktop computer. And I'm gonna redirect the output of this particular command to a, to a, to a file. Let me just uh, call it dpkg dot list. So if you look at the, the if you look at the, the content It's just a, a list of all the software packages that that I have installed on my computer. So, what you can do using this particular file is that you can replicate you can replicate the same installation on a different different computer. So, if you actually copy this particular file to a different computer, to a different computer, a computer that doesn't have um, 
all the software that I have installed on this particular computer. And then you can use DPKG to install all those software that has been installed on this computer. You can replicate all the same so software installations on a different computer by using this particular file. How are you going to do that? You can do sudo dpkg set selection. And now you can use the input. Suppose I am actually on a different computer. Suppose uh, suppose I'm going to SSH to a different computer. Now the computer name has changed from Fresnel to Gauss. So if I want to, suppose I have this particular file, I have this temp dpkg.list file, and I want to replicate all these installations, software packages on Gauss, I can just do sudo dpkg set selections. And then with the input redirected to dpkg.list, suppose, suppose this particular file has been copied to my current, uh, current directory. And the, this way, it's going to replicate uh, and install all the software that's uh, on Fresnel, but uh, install them on Gauss. So, so that's how you can actually use the uh, input redirection. And we also, we, in a previous video, we also looked at uh, another example. That's uh, DEV. DV now. Let's do a long dis listing of the DV now. At that time, we were actually redirecting the command of yes to DV now. Because the yes command only prints a Y to the screen, we were just uh, executing the yes command as some kind of a, a demo or some kind of dummy process. We want to look at uh, how to use the uh, top tools. The, the kind of process management tools to, 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 to manage different processes. So there's no reason for actually that yes to print Y all the time on, on the screen. There's no information to it. So what you can do is to redirect the output to DEV now. And DEV now is just like a black hole. Everything that goes into it is just going to disappear. So everything it doesn't print out the yes anymore. It doesn't print out a Y to the screen anymore. Everything actually goes into uh, DV now. That's another example that you can. Uh, another example of using the output redirection. Now let's look at the standard error. Um, on the temp, I have a C code, CR test .cpp, and we can take a look at the the, co the content of this particular file. We're gonna talk about how to write C codes. In a later video, but uh, for this particular example, the the content is uh, simple enough. So, so in every C++ code, you have to include some kind of a header file. That's just uh, some source code that you want to that defines defines uh, concepts, that defines stuff, defines names and that kind of thing. And then using namespace std, this particular command is going to allow is going to expose everything that's in the standard namespace uh, to to my uh, to to this particular source code to my own source code, so I can use every name in this standard uh, standard namespace, and then here it actually defines a function, and the function actually has a name that's called a main. This main function takes no input, and it returns an output that's an integer, and the body of the function. The content of the function is just these three lines. So C out, C R, C error. These two lines are printing lines. Actually, it's actually displaying hello world to C out. In in, in C plus plus language, C out is a representation of the standard output or STD out. So it's gonna send this hello world, this text string, to C out to the standard output. And then it's ENDL, it's a, it's a C++ representation of uh, the new line symbol. It's the end of the line. So it's called a ENDL, it represents end of the line. So it's going to send hello world exclamation to, to standard output first 
and then send a new line symbol, the end of the line symbol, to the standard output. So this is the first print command. And in C++, CR actually represents the standard error. So here it's going to print a text string that's called a fake error message exclam exclamation mark. It's going to send this particular text string to the standard error and also send a end of a end of the line symbol to the standard error. And then it's going to return zero. That's the last line of the main function. It's going to return an integer that's a zero. So basically that's the content of the C++ code. And then you have to compile it and then it's going to give you a binary executable. This binary executable you can just run it just like the command line tools that we have talked about so far. So what you can do is that you can do suppose I switch into temp suppose I switch into temp and then you can just run it and then it's gonna print out two lines hello world first and then change to a new line fake error message so both the both the standard output and the standard error goes into the screen goes onto the screen so it's gonna print out uh, both the C out the message sent to C out and also the message sent to um, C R C error. So suppose we would like to redirect the output still to the standard output, but we would like to redirect the the, the 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 error message to a file. Suppose, how do we actually do that? If we do C R test with the output redirection to some sort of log file, for example, log, and then. You can sort of see on the screen it's still going to print out a fake error message. If you look at the content of the log, it's going to be the hello world. So by doing the larger than or redirection symbol, it's actually just sending the standard output, the stuff that sends to the standard output to this particular file. So the larger than symbol is a redirection of the standard output. That's what I was telling you guys. So, but I suppose you want to sort of. Uh, redirect the error message to a particular file let's call it err.log what you can do is to what i was telling you is that every the standard input has a num number representation that's zero and the standard output has a number representation that's one and then the standard error has a representation that's two so if we actually put two in front of the larger than sign without any space separating it it's going to redirect the error message into this text file error.log. So now you see the you see the 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 screen output from this particular command is hello world now. And if you look at the content of er.log, you're gonna see that's the fake error message. So the error message, the stuff that that was sent to C C E R R, the C error object in C++, has been redirected to this particular text file. And you you were able to do that by by appending two in front of the larger than the, or the output redirection redirection symbol now suppose you would like to redirect both the output the standard output and also the standard error to a to a log file you can use the end your ampersand you can use the ampersand if you put the ampersand then it's going to redirect both the both the one and the two that's that's the standard input and uh, the standard output and the standard error to this particular file log, and then if you look at the content of the log, it's gonna have two two lines. Hello world, that was the stuff sent to the standard output or C out in C++, and the fake error message that was sent to C R in C++. That's exactly the standard error. Now let's look at how we can combine commands together. So. There are several ways for you to actually combine commands, and they have different utilities and a different uh, uh, meaning. So, we have looked at how how to use the vertical bar or the the pipe, what we call. So, suppose I want to list all the processes that's currently uh, running on my uh, machine. I want to list for all users. I want to list for all terminals, and I would like the printout to be sort of. Uh, more 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 meaningful 
so it's going to list lots of processes. Suppose I would like to filter out uh, filter out everything that's uh, not related to Pochain. So I just uh, want to uh, look at uh, everything that's related to Pochain. It doesn't have to be the username, uh, the user ID, but anything. Suppose the command or suppose the name of the command is related to Pochain. I would like to take a look at those. So what I'm going to do is to uh, I'm going to pipe and then grip Pochain. So the meaning of the vertical bar or the pipe is actually I want to use the output of the frame of the command in front of the pipe as the input to the command that's after the pipe. So this way it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna grip command actually is gonna do a search through all the output of PSAUX and look for the string Pochain. And if it finds this particular string it's gonna print it out. And it's going to print out all the lines that's related to Pochain. So the, the the vertical bar allows allows you to actually redirect the output of the first command to the input of the second command. So in this sense, it's it, you can also think of it as some kind of a, a redirection. It's not, but it's not a redirection redirection to a file, but it's a redirection to the input of a particular command. And in fact, you can actually string together. Uh, multiple commands, so it doesn't have to be just the two commands. You can use more than two commands. You can use as many commands as you want. So suppose I want to count the number of lines that's generated by uh, the, the the grep. So so I, I just want to look at how many lines, how many lines of the PSAUX grep pro chain uh, do I have? So it's telling me it's uh, 87. So WC is a command that we haven't talked about so far, but it's a, it's a command that allows you to count line numbers. So if you do a main WC, it's going to... Uh, okay, so WC print new line word and byte counts for each file. So it takes some input, it takes some input, and then it's going to uh, give you all those information. The number of new line, the number of words, the number of bytes counted for each of the input. And then we're using the dash L option, lines, so print new line counts. How, how many lines do I have? So, so, so in this particular command, I was using PSAUX to generate a list of all the processes running on my machine. And then I, I, I just want to get those, uh, I, I use that output as the input to grab pro chain. And then I use the output of grab pro chain as the input to WC dash L. So it's going to give me uh, the total number of processes that's uh, that's related to Pochain that has the Pochain character string inside of the uh, inside of the, the the list. So 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 you can also think of the pipe as some kind of redirection. But instead of redirection to files, you are actually doing a redirection to the input of another command. And one of the one of the commands that's quite useful is called XARGS, and this particular command is particularly useful when you sort of combine it with other commands using a pipe. XARGS. If you do a main XARGS, it's going to tell you that it build and execute command lines from standard input. So it allows you to construct a command. It actually allows you to construct a command from standard input. But as I, what I was telling you, you don't have to use standard input. You can also use the output of another command. But if you use the pipe as a redirection, the XARGS can use that output of the other command as the input. Just like using the input from, from the standard input. So so let's look at an example. Um, now I have a bunch of files that's under my current directory. Let's uh, let's uh, let's try to let's try to copy the files that's larger than 10k, for example, to another directory. Suppose uh, I'm going to make a directory. Dot dot large. I'm going to make a directory that's called uh, large, and it's um, it's in the parent directory. So because I'm using the dot dot, it's uh, so it means that it's in the parent directory of the current directory. So if I do a long listing of dot dot you're going to see a empty directory that's called large. It's large. 
and for now there's uh, nothing in this particular directory so one way of doing that is by just using find right find has an option that's called exec so what you can do is to find look for the current directory and for files with a size that's larger than 10k and then you would like to uh, execute the following command that's the copy command right copy command and then copy those files so this curly braces is a placeholder for putting the result of the find and then I'm gonna print it into uh, copy it into a large in the parent directory and then I'll end the command that's backslash uh, semicolon sorry so so now if you look into large you're gonna see <coughs> these two files and both of them should have a, a size less larger than 10k I think <coughs> right so so that's one way of uh, doing this um, doing this um, doing this uh, thing find the files that's larger than 10k and then copy them to a different directory that's one way of doing that let me let me delete let me delete the <coughs> let me delete those files and uh, let me let me show you another way by using a pipe and uh, the xargs so i want to find in the current directory look for size that's larger than 10k and now let's let's use the xargs um, I'm gonna use the output of the find command. The output of the find command is gonna be just uh, these two files, right? I'm gonna use that as the input to xargs. And the xargs command allows you to specify a option that's dash i. Dash i means I want to specify where the output actually has to go to in the second command. So CP, I would like to uh, run the CP command. I would like to copy those files, right? But where do I want those uh, output from the find to go in the CP command? Here I use the curly braces again. So using the dash i option allows you to use the curly braces to specify the location of the output from the first command. So 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 it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna, the output of the final command are gonna go here after the cp command after the cp command name and then followed by the directory large that's in the parent directory and then that's it so if you're now looking to now you saw see the two files that's larger than 10k so so basically this command and this command actually ha have the same effect, but by using xargs, you are ha you 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 avoid using the quite a quite a quite a difficult uh, option for the find. This kind of option is sort of not not everyone knows this kind of option and how to use this kind of option. So so you can combine simple commands together. So in this particular case, it's a very simple find command, right? With xargs you achieve the same effect so 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 that's sort of a, the beauty of uh, combining commands together right you can sort of you can sort of uh, construct a very complicated <coughs> commands by using uh, pipes and using this kind of combination um, and each command can be quite a simple it doesn't have to be a very complicated long command okay you can combine very simple commands together into a a very complicated command that achieves complicated tasks. So, so that's uh, that's how you can actually use a use a pipe and uh, xargs is something that's uh, that's quite useful. Allows you to uh, allows you to explicitly construct commands from the output of uh, the previous command. So that's one way of combining commands to text together by using pipes. There are also other ways to combine commands together. So let's let's look at uh, the the files that's in my current directory. I have a I have a C plus plus code. I have a C plus plus code. If you actually look at uh, the uh, the content, if you look at the content of it looks like that. There's a there's a so so this is a 
typical C++ code, very short, very typical C++ code. You have just one function, the main function. The main function takes no input. You can specify inputs also, but for this particular example, I'm not using any inputs to the main function. But it has an output called int. It's an integer. So it's returning an integer and takes no input. Basically, what it does is that it, it's going to print hello world to the standard output, and then it's going to print a fake error message to a standard error. So C out and C R are C++ representations of the standard output and the standard error. And then it's going to return a number. It can be any number or any integer. It can return any integer because uh, you have specified the return type to be an integer. So you have to return an integer. So this return type actually has meaning to the operating system itself, to the command line actually. So, so if you run, if you run CER test, so the, the binary executable is here. So if you compile this command, we're going to talk about how to compile codes into binary executables in a later video. But 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 once you actually have compiled the code, you're going to get a binary executable. It's a binary file. It's a binary file, so you cannot read it. If you do cat. It's gonna give you nonsense, so so it's not sort of uh, readable from uh, from the from the terminal. But 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 the machine can interpret it, the the machine can understand it. So so and it has execute permission, it has x permission, so you can run it. You you just run this command that you build by yourself, just like you run any other commands, by from the command line, just like running for example ls. And then it's going to print out a hello world and a fake error message, this kind of thing. You don't really see where the return. So so if you look look if you look at the CR test of CPP, it does return an integer, but you don't really see this returned integer from the command line. But the operating system itself, that actually you run it from from within, actually has an idea about what's actually the return value. So everything that if you return zero, then the operating system will think that this code, this command has executed successfully and finished correctly. If you return one or anything that's not zero, then the operating system is going to think that this command did not finish correctly. It had some kind of errors or something. So, so, so the operating system can understand the return type, the returned value by a certain command, even though you yourself may not be able to see the value returned. And how we can actually take advantage of that information <coughs> when combining commands together? You have uh, you have two operators. That's uh, this uh, the amp send, two amp sends that's uh, next to each other. And then there's another operator that's uh, two vertical bars next to each other. So we talked about a one vertical bar. One vertical bar means a pipe. It allows you to connect the output of the first command to the input of the next command. But the two vertical bar has a different meaning. We're going to look at the, the, those different meanings a little bit later. But let's look at the, the two ampersand putting together. So ampersand putting together. So 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 suppose I run this. I will run cr underscore test. And then I want to run another system command, for example, ls. So let's 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 see what's going to happen. Let's see what's going to happen. And I'm connecting these two commands using the two ampersand. And let's see let's see let's find out what's going to happen. So it's a, it's a, it's a running CR test, of course. It's printing out a hello world, fake error message, but it's not really running ls because it, if you do ls, you're going to see a list of the current files in the current directory. But it's not doing that. The reason, the reason, the reason is that the, the operating system is going to run the first command first. That's CR test, and then it's going to look at the return, the returned value of CR test, the first command. So if if the return value is zero, then it's going to run the second com command. It means that the first command has finished successfully, and then it's going to run the second command. But if the first command actually returns a, a value that's different from zero, for example, in this particular case. It's actually returning a one, so the operating system is going to think that the first command had some problems, and uh, it's uh, it has failed, so it's not going to run the second command. 
So you can sort of see the kind of dependence between the two commands. So the operating system is going to run the second command only when only when the first command ha ha has completed successfully. So you can actually build the kind of dependence of different commands using this uh, in this and and using this uh, ampersand ampersand this this double ampersand symbol. So suppose I change the return type from one to zero. So I, I'm I'm gonna make the first com first command that I, I build myself to to uh, to return zero instead of one. So I'm gonna use some editor. I'm gonna use the editor. We'll talk about how to use editors a little bit later, but 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 for now let's just uh, I'll, I'll just use this editor and then I'm gonna change it. And then I'm gonna do a recompile it. We'll talk about how to recompile uh, commands <coughs> in a later video. <coughs> so now CR test is gonna return zero now. But now let's repeat the same command. Of course, it's gonna execute the first command that's printing out hello world fake error message. And this time it's gonna return zero. So the operating system is gonna think the first command has finished successfully and then it's going to execute the second command then it's going to do a listing of the current directory so 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 that's uh, that's uh, another way of uh, combining two commands together this kind of dependence so it's going to run the second command only when the first command finished correctly or returns a zero when, when the first command returns a zero Okay, so so now let's 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 look at the opposite of this end end this ampersand ampersand symbol. That's the two vertical bars together. It's just the opposite. So so if I still do this, if the first command actually returns zero, which means it has finished successfully, then it's gonna then the operating system will not execute will not execute the second command. But if the first command has failed by, by returning a value that's not zero, then it's going to execute the second command. So this time, because the first command returns a zero now, so it's not going to execute the second command. Right? But if, if I change the return from zero to one, So here I'm, I, I'm using an exclamation mark. So one trick about Linux of command line is that you can repeat the last command that starts with G++ by using an exclamation mark with some some letters in front of it. It doesn't have to be G++. You can just follow it by G if you have just one command that starts with G in, in the beginning. So, so exclamation mark allows you to repeat a command that you just executed. Followed by the first few letters <coughs> that allows you to uniquely identify that previous command. <coughs> now let's uh, let's re redo this uh, combination of using the two vertical bars. <coughs> this time, because the first command has failed because it returned a value that's different from zero, so it's going to execute the second one. So, it, so so. So the, you, here you see the output from the first ex, uh, uh, first command CR test, and then <coughs> the output from the second command. So so that's the third way for you to combine different types, uh, different commands together. So these two commands, th these two operators, the the symbols, the the two ampersands together, and then two, the two vertical bars together allows you to build the kind of different kinds of dependence among different uh, uh, different. Uh, Different commands. So th that's there's a there's a fourth way for you to combine commands together, which is the semicolon. So basically, what you are actually doing is just uh, running these two commands without any dependence. Just run the first one and then run the second one. So if you want to do that, it's just a uh, it's just going to run the first one first and then run the second one. Regardless, so there's a there's no there's no dependence between these two jobs anymore. It's just running the first one first, and then run the second one next. And you can actually, 
you can actually string together many many commands by using a semicolon and they won't have any kind of dependence so so the execution of aos does not depend upon the return value from cr test the execution of ps has no dependence upon the return value of aos then it's just going to execute these three, three commands uh, consecutively so the one of the one of the things that's uh, about output and the return type is kind of different one of the things that I forgot to mention is that so 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 if you do an AOS if you do an AOS it's gonna give you an output but the AOS command itself also has a return value just like CR test the CR test prints out these two outputs outputs and it also has a return value the return value is returned back to the system back to the operating system it's not printed out to the to the screen the same is true for AOS the AOS is going to print out some output to the screen to the standard output it also has an uh, return value the return value goes back to the uh, operating system it's not uh, printed out to the screen so you cannot see it so every command also has a return value so when you write computer programs you, you can also specify a return value just like uh, in my C++ code you can return a value that's sort of the the value that's returned back to the operating system that you run the command you run the you run the CR test the command from so so it's different from the screen output it's a it's a different concept actually it's a different uh, thing so we talked about four different ways for com combining commands right using the pipe of one vertical wall and then we talked about how to use two amps in together and then two vertical bars together and then the semicolon so four different ways for you to combine commands to combine simple commands into a one very complicated command that's sort of the beauty of the command line you can actually achieve a very difficult task by combining lots of small commands together 